uh, interview for Board of Trustees. We have two candidates. And uh, Bill Corson is up first. Bill, where are you? Here, up here at the top. Oh, there you, you are. Doing? Right there. Good doing evening, well, everybody. Buddy. Good yeah. evening. Good to see all your smiling faces. It's really great. Um, yeah, so I guess you want me to start talking, right? Go right <laughs> ahead, Bill. Okay. Well, when I look back and I think of all the things you all might be looking at uh, when you're looking at somebody to fill these positions, I kind of came up with three areas. Um, one is you probably want somebody who knows the town pretty well. Uh, you probably want somebody who is able to, you know, essentially make a difference, as corny as that may sound. And also somebody who has a personality that's going to fit in with the board so that you can get things done. So if I can address each of those real quick. Uh, first, knowing the town. So some of you know, I have only lived here as a resident since April of 2019. However, what you may not know is my wife and I have had a place in Queechy for 21 years, which is a long time to be in the area. So we do know the area real well. We know Woodstock, uh, obviously been shopping at all the stores, been through all the parks, and we have a real good feel for what is happening here in the area. Uh, akin to that is what is going on the inside. So in addition to knowing the area, I in the last year have spent a lot of time sitting on a lot of your meetings, as I guess some of you know, to uh, you know what the issues are. And I've attended a lot of trustee meetings and a lot of select board meetings and a lot of the combined select and trustee meetings that are both together. I've been on a lot of EDC meetings, design board meetings, and of course my favorite, the uh, Billings Park Commission meetings, which of course I love dearly because I love the outdoors. So in doing those, you don't just sit on the meetings, you know, you gotta be tuned to the things that are going on, like the kiosk for parking and things like the mandatory mass, all those things that you've been discussing so many times. So that's all important, but it's not just, it's, it's being and sitting in and listening to the meeting and a feel for the meeting, not just reading the minutes afterwards. So that's why I like to be in on so many of these to kind of know what's going on in town. So that gives me a feel of, you know, somebody who knows the town. That's the first thing I wanted to talk about. Second thing would be making a difference. And I think somebody that's gonna make a difference in on the trustees is somebody's open to new ideas and concerns of people in the town. And that comes from being a good listener. Uh, listen to a lot of the concerns that have been uh, going on lately, like local and worldly concerns, local things like finding affordable housing for new families, welcoming new families, uh, which is real important because we've got a lot of new families coming into town. More worldly things like addressing social justice, which is a huge issue across the nation now, as I'm sure you're all well aware. And also how to deal with COVID problems, how to open up the schools and churches and things like that. Some of the issues I've been listening to. But I think in order to listen to what the people in the town need is we want to hear from them directly. And in order to do that, somebody like me needs to participate in activities in the town, right? So one of the new things I've been able to do is I'm actually now on the board of Pentangle Arts, which has been a great thing for me because I love the arts and theater. And that would be a great opportunity for me to be able to um, visit with lots of people who are coming to all the movies, coming to all the shows, even though they're not fully active at the moment, um, interacting with parents of the kids that are in these uh, educational programs that Pentangle puts together. So lots of opportunities to get to know people in town and again, to learn about their concerns and ideas. Other things I've been doing, I've been helping out at the Iwatakuchi River Trail um, development down there. Got to know a lot of people doing that. Uh, my wife and I are active now, starting up with the um, Meals on Wheels with Thompson Center. Also doing uh, tomorrow the Veggie Van Gogh food shelf activity. We're doing that. So we're trying to get active in those places as well. And you may not know this, but I'm actually the president of the brand new Woodstock Pickleball Club. And I know some of you have heard about this and you'll hear more about it at the select board meeting next week. <laughs> but um, there's another opportunity to see a bunch of people, you know, 30, 40 people that come out to play pickleball regularly. I get to talk and get to know them pretty well. And really part of that whole process is hearing what they have to say. They know the town, they know we want to talk about the town, we want to talk about what's going on. In addition to that, I've been a regular congregate at St. James Episcopal Church, where I know a lot of people there who have concerns about the town as well. So anyway, 
those are things and ways that I am participating in town. And that's where I think it can make a difference when it comes to listening and assimilating the ideas and bringing them to the trustees. So that's the second thing, knowing the town and how to make a difference. And then the third thing I think would be really um, having the right kind of personality to fit in. I know a bit of you all from listening to you on these meetings and I, I think it's a great, you have a great team going there. My personality is my wife calls me that I'm a man of action, <laughs> which defined more closely would be I have enough drive and interest to get things going. And um, I wouldn't achieve so many things in my lifetime if I didn't have a little bit of drive and interest in seeing things get from point A to point B. So things I've achieved like starting my own insurance agency in New Jersey. My wife and I co-founded the Light Opera of New Jersey, which we ran for 25 years. Three shows a year for 25 years, that's a lot of shows I've produced. So those things have fallen into my lap. And the little things like, you know, my hiking interests, I've climbed all the 4,000 footer mountains in New Hampshire, which may not be a big deal, but those are the types of things where I've got a lot of interest and motivation going on in my personality that I think would fit. And one of the things about those things, I'll say real quick and I'll finish up, is that a lot of those are leadership positions. Um, being leadership of the Pickleball Club may not be as, as serious as leading uh, an entire opera company for 25 years. But in order to be a leader first, you have to be a team player and have enough interpersonal skills to connect people from one end of the, of the argument to the other. So that's where I feel my personality will help fit in with the board the way it is, and I can offer some new insight that way. So the three things, knowing the town, making a difference with volunteering, listening, and participating in town activities, and then having the right personality to fit in. So those are things that I think I could offer um, Chair Khan and the rest of you crew. Um, and lastly, just let me say that um, one more thing about me is that I'm retired, folks. I got lots of time to put into this, and I'd be happy to do it if you'll have me. I mean, retirement's more than just hiking and playing pickleball, which I love to do. But when it gets right down to it, I don't have any family, no young children to take care of, no job. I don't own a business. I'm here to retire in town, and my wife and I love it here. So I'd be happy to help out if needed, and uh, hope you'll consider me. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Bill. That was. Um really well thought out presentation thank you Sorry, so um, long. <laughs> and uh no that's great now one of the questions that comes up for me is uh what are the rules of pickleball pickleball is a very strange no, game it's a cross between uh tennis and badminton <laughs> i'll no, tell you about I, it at length yeah no i i actually looked it up on youtube after reading your resume and uh watched oh, a little of it, it looks good. like fun it is fun you should uh, try it I might do that. I might do that. So yeah. I'm wondering if uh, uh, my fellow trustees have some questions for you. Um, Seton, Daphne. Yeah, I've got um, some questions. Sure, Seton. Um, uh, if I may. Um, so, Bill, when I read through your um, when I read through your application, um, it seemed like you have a fairly good sense of the town. Um, you're starting to learn as a resident. You've known it as um, somebody who is here part-time. Um, so just from that experience um, and sort of taking into consideration where we are in the world right now with um, COVID and um, you know lots of changes in social justice um, and the demand that things are sort of changing pretty rapidly um, mm. and knowing that Woodstock has already started to respond, what would be um, two things that you think could remain in Woodstock and two things that you would like to see changed, whether that's it changed because of COVID or changed because of social things or just that you think could, could be improved um, within the village. Okay, so I got to think of four things, is that what you're telling me? Yeah, so <laughs> okay. you, wanna, you well, would want to change and two things you would like to change. Okay, let me think at the top of my head. First thing is I like that I don't want to change is the nature of the town, okay? The town is very, very welcoming. And I don't think I'd like to see really much about the change in the way the town looks. I know the design board is sort of the gatekeeper of um, what should be the same, what should look the same, and what is open to change. And I've sat in a couple of those meetings because some of the issues, uh, I have bought some of the properties where there, there's been discussion. So those are two things I'd like to see stay the same. Um, 
changing? Well, I think that Trotsky's could do some things. The one thing I thought about the most was, I mentioned earlier, um, welcoming new people to town. Now, I guess you've noticed the enrollment for the elementary school is going way up. I don't know the exact number, but it's a lot. And I've seen a lot of perambulators going around town that I never used to see before. So there's a lot of young families coming into town. I think the Chamber of Commerce is doing a great job and Beth and all her crew, but I think there may be some things trustees can do to enhance that, augment that. Maybe we need to have a, a special committee of some kind or some kind of liaison that would help the chamber welcome some of these people. Those people really, we want them to know what Woodstock's all about. We want them to um, feel welcome here, but also know that we're not putting up high rises and we're not having you know all kinds of, of discolorful, distasteful things going on in the town, and we have a really great culture here. So I think that might be something we could do as trustees, something that, I don't wanna say change, but something that we could progress in a certain direction. That's something I'd like to see happen. Other than that, I think just being attuned to social justice might be the second thing. Um, I try to be as up to date on all this stuff as possible. You read the newspapers every day, and you know sometimes it's very discouraging, but if there are ways that we can be more sensitive, that that might be a, a step we could take in that direction too. So I hope that answers your question. I came up with two each, right, didn't I? I think so. <laughs> okay. You did. You did indeed. Okay. Daphne, any questions? I don't have any questions. Okay. All right, Bill, uh, I think Seton's questions uh, that you answered nicely uh, answered mine. Uh, my only Thanks. question that I had for you. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you. No, no matter what happens now, thank you for your participation uh, in, in town, which you're the village, you're already participating in, in a, a way that's helpful. So that, that's wonderful. Thank and, you, Jeff. Uh, you're, you're very, very welcome. Um, and now uh, we'd like to move on to Jennifer Raymond. And Jennifer, tell us uh, a little bit about little bit about why you should be um, a village trustee. You have to unmute yourself, Jennifer. Not yet. There okay. you go. Well, I think I've been in all three places as a visitor, as a second homeowner, as a resident. I've been a parent here. My parents live here. My children live here. So I have a lot of um, perspective as far as the needs of a, of a diverse group of people. Um, my family's been here for 100 years. Uh, I mean, my husband's family, my family's been here for 80 we're the first generation that's been able to live here because my husband can telecommute. And it's just been really nice. Um, I've experienced the schools. Um, I really support the merchants. Uh, for over 30 years, I've really tried to support the town, even when we weren't here full time. So um, that's a little bit about me. <laughs> this is my first political interview, so. <laughs> I, I guess I, you know, I have two kids that are in, one's in college, one's just graduated, but I'd really like to take the opportunity to help the town because we're having an influx of people and this is a great opportunity. We have so many young people moving in and I agree. I think that Bill did a great, um, had a great idea in welcoming people because it's a hard time to meet people. Um, you know, even for my husband and I, who also is a very avid hiker and has done the 4,000 footers, um, you know, we, we have to figure out how we're going to make people feel comfortable here because they, you know, don't have the normal avenues. So I'm not, I don't have ideas about that yet. He actually brought it up and I talked to somebody else about that today. And I think that's a great idea. Um, I have a lot of experience in town. I've been on the parking committee. I've worked on Woodstock Works. Um, I, I'm a grant writer. I think that going forward, we're gonna have to find new ways of finding income. Um, and I think that we're missing opportunities with grants and that's something that I do. But you know, a lot of the projects that we're looking at, um, you know, we're having infrastructure problems. We need a school or we, you know, 
there are so many issues on the table where we're going to need some money and the time's going to come where we have to face this and we need to get our representatives and elected officials behind trying to get some of our money back from Act 60 because we're just too small to be able to send that much money out and not have enough come back. Um, so I would like to work with the elected officials, uh, the senators, the uh, representatives, and um, explore what we can do because we need to make some improvements and the time's come. So uh, those are the main things on my mind. Um, I just really like a democratic, um, a democratic process, open meetings, um, I think, that's the most important thing here. I want everybody to have a voice and I want it to be a diverse voice. Um, so I guess I'm open for questions. Great, thank you. So um, Daphne and uh, Seton, any questions for Jennifer? Go ahead Seton. Oh, Daphne, did you have something? You're muted. Oh. I, no, no, I know you have the questions though, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll represent the group then. Um, so thank you um, for all that, Jennifer. Um, and I wanna take sort of um, kind of the question that, um, that I gave to Bill, um, mm -hmm. but then um, also wanted to sort of um, you, you just talked about having diverse voices on the trustees. So I actually just want to follow up with that one really quickly. Um, because um, Vermont, as we all know, is not super diverse when it comes to right. um, lots of different things, um, especially when it comes to people of color. Um, Woodstock, uh, the village itself is very white and it's um, very upper middle class and upper class, which is, wonderful um but it does mean that we um that we don't have diverse voices um necessarily um and and we i certainly agree with you that we would do better to have um people of color people with different backgrounds people with you know even different religions different cultures different philosophies so could you talk a little bit more about um what you think about adding diverse voices and maybe how we as a as a village could could encourage that could welcome that sort of diversity you know, it, it's interesting because I've never considered myself to see anybody as different. And we're all talking about how, um, you know, we're, we're in a tricky time this way. Um, but I just, my daughter's best friend from middle school, you know, was a minority. And so I've just never felt like there's been a lot of difference, even though um, I just have been around a lot of diversity. I think what I'm talking about is not just one opinion of how to do something. Um, I agree that this is an important movement, um, but you know, for this interview, I'm just not focusing on that. Um, I'm just focusing on what I can offer, and that is another opinion of how to do something. Because if everybody in the room has already talked about it, or you know, as part of a movement, you know, for instance, affordable housing. There's another, there could be other ways if we invite other people into the conversation. And I think when you have differing opinions and different ideas, you usually get a better result. So um, I think that it's been a struggle and I'm for it, but I just think that there should be more diverse conversations happening about how to do some things in town. Okay. Well, then I'll also give you Bill's question about um, uh, two things that you would like to keep the same in the village and two things that you would like to see changed. Um, I think that our downtown needs some work. Um, so I would like to help figure out, write grants, find opportunities so that our downtown building facades can get some more work done. Um, you know, I think the taxes are super high. Everybody just got their bill and it was a 9.6 increase as far as I could tell, um, which is a lot of money and we have a lot of seniors here. So, you know, I think that one thing we need to do is watch our budget 
and figure it out how we're going to, you know, find some more money um, and get our town looking better because it's a beautiful town, but compared to 20 years ago, it's a little bit run down. And this is our main source of business here and um, jobs is the in and the tourists they bring. So we really need to watch that and take care of the town that we have. It's one square mile, the village is one square mile and people have a choice of different towns to go to and I'd love for them to keep picking Woodstock. All right, thank you. Great, thank you, Jennifer. Um, so we have uh, four candidates for these two open positions on the trustees. Um, uh, so uh, besides the two we've just heard from, we also have Brenda Blakeman and Jeremy Fryer. And uh, the trustees will be discussing uh, these four candidates in executive session uh, later in this meeting. And then uh, out of that executive session, uh, we will um, come back out and be public in our, our decision. So thank you both. Those were both uh, well thought out responses and we really appreciate it. Um, I, you know, we have four qualified candidates and in many, many years in the past, we uh, have never been uh, as blessed as that. So thank you. I'd like to move along uh, on our agenda now. Um, and we have an interview for the Village Development Review Board. I'm sorry, is that someone? Just an echo, okay. Um, an interview for the Village Development Review Board, uh, Mary Ann Flynn. Hello and, uh, everybody, that's me. <laughs> I appreciate the time uh, to introduce myself to you and to hear some of what's going on at this meeting, it's very interesting. Uh, after spending 20 years uh, visiting this area, my husband and I purchased a home here in 2016. And last year we decided to move here permanently. And we made the decision uh, to move up here at the end of December last year. Little did we know what we would be into this year and how lucky we were to be here. Um, I'm interested in serving on the Village Development Review Board. Uh, I have a combination of my personal interests in home building and remodeling projects. I passionately, I'm always doing something on our home. Um, I love historic properties and preserving them. And I also have a business background that I think would help me be a valuable member of the board. Uh, my experience with the, de uh, the Development Review Board is um, coming before it myself a few times um, since 2016. My husband and I have had some projects that we've done on the house and I've come before um, the board a couple of times. Our home is 200 years old. It needed a lot of uh, TLC when we bought it. And we also wanted just to make some uh, beautification changes ourselves. So I learned um, from those experiences what it was like to go through um, meeting uh, before the different boards, the design board and the uh, development board. And coming from outside this area, my husband and I came from Boston. Uh, we, in Boston, we had lived in a historic home in the Charlestown section of the city. And we chose that home due to its historic uh, preservation in the area. Um, our home there was built in the 1860s, our home here in 1820. So we're used to living in and doing over homes and keeping, um, the era they were built in and the area around the homes um, in mind, certainly as we do any up, uh, updates. Uh, my husband and I have done a lot of work on our homes ourselves. We've also hired professionals. And uh, here in Woodstock, many members, uh, many neighbors and passerbys will mention how beautiful our home and garden uh, is now. And we really appreciate that. We just, we love doing that work. Um, from a business perspective, what I would bring the board is that I have, um, I have an undergraduate degree in psychology. I have a master's degree in business management. I worked in management positions at four different technology startup companies um, from the early 90s through 2016. Uh, you can see a description of my roles there um, on LinkedIn if you're interested in that. But 
in my experience, at each of those companies, we launched a new business model that introduced a new way to run um, a kind of business. I was a part of the initial hire team at each of those four companies. And at the height of my career, I, um, I was vice president in charge of global operations for a marketing technology company in, um, in Boston. I worked with some of the largest enterprises in the world. Um, and um, each of my positions really required that I had the ability to build relationships with people at all levels of the organizations uh, that I worked in and also that were our clients. Uh, but more importantly, I think I had to look for creative solutions to new problems and I had to grow business. So um, lots of challenges along the way. I loved learning new areas of um, industry. I loved um, having new challenges to figure out. And um, I, re I retired in 2016 from business. I've devoted the last few years to a combination of personal and home projects but I have a need to be productive and I have time and I have interest to focus my talents here um, in this new, new town for us that we call home. Um, I also hear as you know, what I heard a few of the other folks say, I hear of more new families moving to the area in light of the pandemic. Hopefully we will see uh, businesses start to move in as well. And many people from other locations are not required to go before boards uh, before they make changes to the exterior of their home and businesses. So I learned uh, some of what that process is like. Um, I'd like to help share it with newcomers to make it seem not intimidating. And, um, and also, I, I really love the look of this town. And I think you can um, preserve that and still help folks meet the needs that they have um, with any changes that they want to make to their homes. So I'm hoping you know, that that um, that is something that I can help people do to, um, uh, you know, to really make changes that they need to their homes or their businesses to help the community thrive uh, and to keep preserving the beauty of this historic community. So that's a little about me. I'm happy to answer any questions. Well, thank you. Um, you've really covered a lot of what the, the Village Development Review Board uh, does and what their goals are. Um, are there any directions you would like to see it different from where having attended many of their meetings uh, and what you've observed so far? Well, I think um, I think it seemed a little overwhelming when I first uh, needed to go before them. And I think um, this time around when I went, uh, I actually have an, another project that um, I'll be going before them, <laughs> actually, before the people who are already part of the board in a few weeks uh, to make a change to the outside of our house. I think there have been some great changes that have been put into place as far as outlining all the different steps that need to be done um, to present your project clearly to the board. Uh, but I think just knowing, I guess, um, that we that it's a welcome that there's someone people could talk to if they have little questions ahead of time um, who have gone through changes before uh, on their homes i guess just making it a little bit more user friendly for people who are new to town to know exactly what to do um, where to go for resources on how to get things all lined up so they give a strong presentation when they are talking about the changes they uh, need to make on their businesses or homes Thank you. Now, the board meets twice a month, um, mm -hmm. and that's, that doesn't present a problem for you. It doesn't. I'm retired now. I have time and flexibility, and as, as long as sometimes I can call in uh, instead of be there in person, which has been the case for months now, um, I, I could, that's not a problem at all. Great. Any, uh, any other questions? Daphne, Seton? Yes, Seaton. Um, just sort of a, a different way of asking the question that I asked the previous two folks, but focusing a little bit more about design. Um, if there was one thing that you could, that you definitely want to keep about like the design of the town and, and, and maybe even the process, because you're familiar with the process, what would that be? And then um, what would be a thing that you might change? Well, I, 
I love the um, the historic beauty of the town. So I wouldn't want to see too many changes that would um, that would really make it easy for people to do things that were quite out of character with the, the town itself and how it looks. Woodstock has a brand and that brand is strong and um, is appealing to a certain kind of visitor. And we want to keep that kind of visitor and uh, expand it so more visitors come. Uh, what I would change, I think, um, I think I would look for a way to make the process of finding out how you go through doing a change to your home or business externally um, easier. You kind of have to dig through the town website and many people just don't know where to go, uh, who to contact, where to find this information. There's quite a lot of good information there. It's just a little bit hidden. So I think there's got to be some uh, ways to make that much more visible and uh, and user friendly. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, thank you for your your answers. They're all uh, very good, and your enthusiasm enthusiasm is great. Daphne, do you have any questions? No, I I just wanted to thank her. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for listening, everybody. I um, I'm very interested in it. It's a passion of mine and uh, hope you consider me. Well, uh, not only will we consider you, but at this point, uh, with nobody else um, trying to, for the same position that I'm aware of, uh, I would entertain a motion um, that we uh, approve you for uh, uh, the Village Development Review Board. I make a motion to approve Marianne for the Village um, Development Board. Second. Okay, um, and uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Um, I don't know if I can vote or not, but aye. <laughs> well, now it's just three of us now, Anna. Um, temporarily. Um, so thank you, Marianne, and welcome to the Village Development Review Board. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Okay, You're I'll be welcome. on the meeting tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right. Uh, let's move on to the uh, police chief's report. Unless there are any additions or deletions from the agenda. Nikki, I, I'm not aware of any uh, at this point. No. So m moving on to our police chief's report. Chief Blish. Hi, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. You can hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, good. All right, good evening. Um, tonight, I just want to let right. everybody know. We're having a little trouble. Our little website trouble now, is pretty much finalized. Is this better? There's quite a bit of delay. Uh, let's try that. Let's try it now. Is this a little bit better? Uh, it's a little better. Speak slowly and clearly. All right. I'll try to, to speak as slowly and clearly as I can. Our website is complete. And if you haven't checked it out yet, check it out at www.woodstockpolice.org. It's got a lot of uh, different options and, and things on there um, that I think you will find interesting. You can also download certain forms if you need to. And there's a whole bunch of other resources on, on the website as well. Uh, today was the first day of school. And as everybody I hope is aware, um, and it went pretty smoothly, I think. We didn't get any complaints. Uh, traffic worked pretty smooth. The school did a good job of getting everything um, set up so that there weren't any uh, hiccups. Uh, the town officer was out at the high school. I was out at the elementary school. Woodstock PD, we participated in the Governor's Highway Safety Labor Day DUI campaign. Uh, it generated eight and a half hours of extra patrol for the village. Some tickets were written. And uh, for better or for worse, we didn't get any DUIs, so that's a good thing in that 
hopefully there weren't any um, intoxicated drivers on the road. Um, people continue to be overwhelmingly, I think, compliant with our mask ordinance uh, from what I uh, can observe. Officer uh, Caleb McIntyre successfully completed his first week of the full-time police academy. Uh, his projected graduation date is December 22nd. Uh, the only other issue I received, and then I'll, I'll talk a little bit about meters, um, is I received a complaint. I invited him to the meeting tonight, but I did receive a complaint about uh, the trail, the new trail. Um, it was Doug Oddsley. I guess the trail ends not too far from his property. He's having an issue with people trespassing on his property once they get to the end of the trail, particularly uh, mountain bikers. Um, he was asking if uh, the village, and of course it's also a town issue as well, um, may be able to help him out with that. So I'll reach out, I'll meet with him again and um, help see if we can post some extra signage at the end of the trail telling people not to trespass. But unless the trustees have any other ideas that I'm not thinking of at this point. Well, for one thing, Robbie, it's my understanding that uh, the trail is not open to mountain bikers. It's simply a walking trail and it's not. Yeah, well, he said he, he told me he was finding, he was seeing mountain bikers. So maybe a little, I haven't seen the signage to see if there's, enough signs there to tell people. Meet, uh, meet the revenue on the bright side is, is on the upward trend, which is um, a good thing, obviously. Uh, this month, our meter revenue was $9,156.20. Compare that to last month of $776. It's, it's, it's a really big jump. And then, but when you compare it to August of 2019, uh, our revenues last year at this time were $15,561.10. But again, I think it's a, it's a very positive jump in terms of meter revenue. And that's what um, from my okay. police report. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have any questions for our chief? Um, none from the board. Any, any, anyone from the public have a question for our chief at this point? Well, hearing none, thank you very much, Robbie. Oh, my pleasure. I'll stick around too. I think there might be, yeah, parking committee and old business. So I'll stick around for that, obviously. Great. Thank you. Okay, moving along. Uh, permits. We have uh, Beth from the chamber. Uh, to talk to us about Wassel Weekend and uh, Christmas Market, and uh, right. Beth, tell us about it. Sure, we are we are really trying to continue to support Wassel Weekend and make it happen during this really difficult time. Um, we know there won't be house tours. We're looking forward to trying to perhaps have some carriage rides around town um, and maybe up High Street. We're not quite sure. We have a meeting tomorrow at 3.30. If anyone would like to participate, call me um, to talk about how it will look. We do know the parade will happen, but we really have to be able to spread people out so they're not all congregated on the green. So they're at Triview Park, they're at the Congo Church, they're at Pi, they're all along Central. Um, so we know we need to do this. Um, and we're also looking at perhaps creating something new, which would be a Christmas market outside, um, similar to what you see in European markets. And this year we're thinking about one day on Saturday um, and we would like to be able to use the, the middle bridge. And of course we close that off anyway during the parade and um, really from nine o'clock on. And so we would put 
vendors um, on the why that comes out of the bridge. The bridge is um, 139 feet long and hold on one sec, uh, about 15 feet wide. So we would have tents spread out um, throughout the bridge and on the um, Y to create a Christmas market, really create um, a beautiful decoration, not just the, the, the wreath and the lights, but have lights under the bridge and um, cr maybe swag, more swag on the bridge, just, you know, make it a, a, um, a centerpiece of, of the village. Interesting that uh, now you, you say vendors, what right. sort of vendors? Um, if you remember two years ago, we had some great vendors that um, were not uh, sold in stores. We have a, a wonderful woman who creates handbags. We might have silo distilleries. Um, you know, some of our, our spirit people that would do tastings and sell, um, some of our market, um, market on the green vendors. Um, we will be looking at that after, um, tomorrow when we discuss, you know, after, if we get approval of it. Well, um, so, um, I'm sure there are other questions for you, but one that comes to my mind is, and this would just be something to keep in mind. Um, this, that particular weekend and that month is a critical month to all those merchants in the village of Woodstock right. who spend a lot of time decorating their stores and to rely on that month for their livelihood to work and hold them up through the following months until the following season starts. So I would hope you would pick people who do not compete with uh, existing businesses in the village. Uh, to me, that would be um, ridiculous. Right. I think uh, we're really a choice, sensitive choice to that. by the chamber. Um, I think we were very sensitive to that. I mean, we had a coffee maker, um, you know, coffee, um, um, coffee maker, a um, roaster. Thank you. You're welcome. A coffee roaster. Um, there's a woman that that works above um, that has an office and um, craft space above 37 Central that makes um, unbelievable pillowcases and other um, those kind of things that are very unique. So we're looking at high end um, an artisan's market, not just we're not looking to replace, I have no idea what Jennifer Maxim is doing yet with the market, you know, the, the craft fair down at the Congo church. I mean, not the Congo church, the uh, Masonic. Masonic. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, but we're looking at, at, you know, some of our markets, we have a candy maker um, that's at, at our market on the green. Um, so some of those kind of things. Yeah. Well, I think that's really important. I, I would just say that, you know, uh, drawing people to the covered bridge away from the center of the village on that particular day, the busiest day of uh, that, of Wassel weekend, is very dangerous if you uh, have too many vendors that are going to draw too much uh, funds away from the merchants. And I know that uh, I'm speaking as one of those merchants, but I know I'm speaking for um, the others as well when I say that would be a concern. That no, I, recognize, I think we recognize that, Jeffrey. I mean, 139 feet does not leave. I mean, if you have to have six feet be, between vendors, as we have to at the market on the green, you're not talking about you know, 30 vendors under the bridge. We're just trying to create something and support the, the downtown. I mean, they're, you know, we're working on having um, wagons that will drive people around town that, that might get 
they might charge for, there will be no house tour. We're just looking to, to make sure that it is special enough that people still want to come, that it's not just, you know, that it, we want to make it special. And the Christmas market seemed to be an added value. Mm -hmm. Along with all the, the wonderful things that people could buy in the village. It's not, I mean, it's, it's three doors down from, from Focus, the new art gallery in town. So it's, mm -hmm. it's not. I love the wagon idea, by the way. I think that, I think that's great. Now on your application, Beth, you, you, you mentioned this would be on Saturday. On the application, it says December 11th, 12th, and 13th. No, we're only going to try Sat. We're going to try one day to see if it works. Um, we felt that that, you know, we don't, again, we don't want to impinge on people. We want to make the um, event special. And we thought having a one day market might on the day that there will be the parade. We're not sure about the bonfire that draws too many people. We have to have that discussion, um, you know, but we have to replace the house tour. Um, we're thinking about doing some, you know, some kind of challenge to the, to the stores downtown, the, the businesses downtown to do a decoration contest so that, you know, maybe working with the garden club, we could award, you know, that maybe people will take it to the next level so that people love walking downtown and voting for their favorite storefront. So those are all, I mean, we're really trying to incorporate the downtown um, and, and try to be creative during a really difficult time. <laughs> mm -hmm. So there might be questions from uh, my fellow trustees. Seaton? Yeah. Um, unless, Daphne, did you have anything? I'm just wondering how the crowds are going to be controlled during the parade and the um, shopping, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I, the stores have to control their own. You know, mm -hmm. there will be X amount of people who can go in a store, just like there are now. And I think if you've been to Malvere lately or even Clover Gift Shop and mm -hmm. um, the Unicorn, that there have been times where people have to wait outside because there are too many people in the store. Um, we're going to work with Chief Blish and hopefully volunteers, maybe some here tonight, who will help us. We're talking about doing um, non-alcoholic -al wassail, hot wassail at maybe Triview Park, the Congo Church, so that, that we draw people down different viewing places. We're going to have to keep them off the green, you know. I mean, 150 people, so we're going to have to move people, um, you know, maybe one at Pi, a Wassel station, and, you know, maybe the French club would like to be there doing their crooks with Wassel, you know, so that we're, we're driving people in different places to watch the parade. And that's, I, again, we're meeting tomorrow at 3.30 with a Zoom meeting. If you have any interest in joining, um, email me or text me or whatever tomorrow, and I'll send you the link because we'd love to have you join. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. Beth, I have a couple of questions. One, I think it's a great idea. Um, I've done Christmas markets in D.C., and they are Fantastic because it feels European and it feels very special and to be outside is just it's a whole other experience. So I love the idea um, uh, The only two questions concerns I had were um, Why did you decide first part is why did you decide to do the middle bridge instead of on the green? Well, the green is so busy already. We have okay. food on the green. We have Wassel on the green. There's the bonfire again if we're going to have it so we thought the middle bridge made it even more special that it, you know, that it was just so unique because it's a beautiful bridge and, and people would enjoy um, shopping there. 
Okay. And in terms of, and I'm, you've got time to figure this out, but in terms of COVID, will you be treating it as an indoor space or an outdoor space? I think an outdoor space. But Ray, I'm going to look to Ray because he and I have gone and measured the bridge, et cetera. But um, I would say it's going to be con considered an outdoor space unless David Green or uh, the right. chief say differently. Right. And we're going to work with them. And has there been any, and I know this is early, but has there been any outreach to um, residents that live sort of no. bridge adjacent? just to start giving them a heads up or anything like Not that? Not until we speak with you folks. I mean, oh, okay. you know, there's no point in it unless we get a permit. And if we get a permit, we definitely will be reaching out um, pretty immediately. Okay. Although I guess Naked Table does something similar. So right. there's a press. Right. And it's closed. If you remember, it's closed for the majority of the day on the day of the parade because we don't want people coming out during. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And we are we are still looking. We're going to be looking for some sponsors so that we have the parking up at the high school, which worked really well last year. We had two buses that ran in in mm. loops. Um, I have also had. I don't want to frighten anyone, but I've also had a conversation with a um, tour group who wants to come from New Jersey, the safe part of New Jersey with 45 people. They're looking for a place to eat um, on Saturday. So it's still on people's radar. I get calls every day about Wassel. So we have to make it, we have to make it the best and safest we can for this year. Awesome. Thanks, Beth. And the the outdoor market, I agree with Seton. It it would make it really special. Yeah. yeah some fun lights in there, and yeah, I just can see it being beautiful. Jeffrey, you're muted. <laughs> you're right. Uh, Rachel just went by, so I had muted myself. Um, yes, so uh, I move that we accept the uh, the w winter market as described by Beth. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Hi. Okay. The motion carries. Thank you, Beth. Thank you very much. Jeff? Hi, Jeff. Yes. I'm slightly confused as to why I'm not allowed to vote. I don't get a last meeting. Uh, well, you resigned two weeks ago. Um, sure. So, but this, I stated uh, as, my that this was my last meeting. Well, as, as chair of the parking committee, I know you're giving the report tonight, but you're sure. not a trust a trustee at this time any anymore, Anna. Um, uh, this is in my official last meeting? Well, uh, to make a presentation, but not as a voting member of the board. You're no longer a trustee in, of the board. I thought that and Kerry, when Kerry resigned last meeting, he had he, resigned earlier, but he, his, he voted during the last meeting. Because he didn't move, uh, he didn't move from Woodstock to Bridgewater till the 19th. So there's a bit difference. You, you're, you're not, you don't live in Woodstock any longer. But that wasn't. And I mean, that was not. I, I, that's that's <laughs> the reason why he still lived here, and you and you don't. It's that simple. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that there's a misunderstanding on your part. But you know, you are not uh, a trustee at this time, and legally, you can't be. My, so, Jeff, my current housing situation was the same then when I had previously voted. So that, that doesn't make any sense. Anna, you resigned two weeks ago with a letter, and so I'm afraid we have to honor that. You're no, not. I know, but I, I, I said in the letter that this was my last meeting. Um, you're not as a trustee. This is your last meeting, and you're, you're leading a committee to report but you can't 
be participating as a trustee. I'm sorry for I'm sorry if you misunderstood that. I just, I just don't know I, if the other trustees could weigh in. I just don't know if that's actually true. I mean, well, I mean, um, my I understanding, and we all have. Daphne, Jeffrey, and I now have handbooks, so I'm happy to take a look um, and see what the language is. My understanding is that once you write the letter, there's it's either two weeks to ten days. I can take a look, but um, you might have to consult somebody else on exactly what like. If the letter is sent in and the letter is accepted, I think that you have the letter to... states that this is my last meeting. I think that okay. both people agree on the letter, but that I mean that might be above my pay grade. I'm happy to start taking a look because we we all have our handbooks. No, I'm just surprised that I can't vote at all. Like I'm trying that. to look. Um, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> Bill, do you know? I mean, if I voted last meeting, I should be able to vote. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have my handbook with me. <laughs> so. Okay. I just passed them out today. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not trying to be argumentative. I'm just a oh, little. Oh no. I'm just trying to take it, taking it back. Just a little. Uh, I I understand. I'm sorry that uh, that we have this misunderstanding going on, Anna. But yeah. um, I'm. I'm pretty sure that uh, having resigned a couple of weeks ago, that at this point, and having been accepted, that at this point, you, you can't be here as a voting member of the trustees. Um, so, um, in the meantime, I would um, like to I've move actually, on. I've actually looked this up just now, because I'm on, I can be on the internet when you're not, and, it's, and Vermont, League of Cities and Towns says a re resignation is not effective until the date and time of the announced resignation has passed. An elected officer announcing that he or she will resign in one month is not bound by Vermont law to actually leave the office at the self-proclaimed date. But there's the complication of not living in Woodstock um, at, at, at any longer and having realized that that was a situation that could not go on. Jill, where did you um, find that? Um, VSA, was it? That's in the Vermont League of Cities and Towns handbook, but that doesn't refer to what Jeff is refer. That doesn't speak to what Jeff is referring to about living in the village or not. Yeah, that was probably in our charter, right? Daphne, did you have something? Yeah, Anna, you still own your home in Woodstock Village. Yeah, which is why, which is why I didn't resign right when I had shifted, you know, right. my living situation because I still own property and pay taxes in the village. Um, but because people were concerned about me not being there full time, I decided to resign because I'm, I'm not comfortable serving as a trustee if nobody, if it's not, well, you know, if it's not supported fully. So, um, so yeah, that's, I'm just as surprised this last meeting was taken from me. That's all. It feels taken from me. Oh, oh sorry. You're, um, you're still here, though. You're I, at the meeting. I am, but I would like to vote. I mean, but it's okay. Anna, can you send me and Daphne your letter? Just so we can... Yeah, I was just trying to find it. Um, we we'll all be on the same page. Bill, or... Bill, should, Bill should have it. It was in the body of an email. Um, and uh, so, should, uh, so should Jeff. Yeah, what I would have to. I would have to find it. Anna, what was the date of the letter? I yeah, I have it back at the office, but not. I'm trying to find it. I've been searching. I might be able to find it here. We don't have to spend any more time on this. I was just, I there's quite you know things happening. So. Uh, I I would like to move on. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry for the misunderstanding, Anna, but it is, we have more to cover here tonight, and I'd like to move on. Um, hey, Jeff, and, uh, did I ask one question about the, um, about the Christmas market, what date that's been set for? Saturday of Wassel weekend. Uh, what uh, what uh, uh, day would that be, do you think, in December? uh was it the 11th uh i'd have to check the calendar what I that saturday the 12th. is on the I 12th? Think 12th. 
Yeah, the Russell 12. Weekend is the 11th, 12th, and 13th. So the 12th, okay. Alan. 12th. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. So next up, we have the Parking Committee Report, which is Anna, who's, um, who's been chairing Jeff, that. Did you want to, are you okay with moving on without resolving the issue? We want to know if Anna can vote. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And didn't um, Jill say that she could? Um, I don't think Jill decides whether she can or not. Although, well, it's not a decision. Know, it's a I, I know. Rules. Exactly. So the, the information I had was about um, a the, the timing of a resignation. It's not related. It wasn't addressing the issue of whether Anna lives here or not. But if Anna did live <laughs> here, I mean, if Anna wrote a letter and put a date of her resignation, that's honored according to the, the Vermont League of Cities and Towns that I wrote, that I read just now. I mean, my only so, concern would be that the letter of resignation was accepted by Bill and Jeffrey, presumably, because we've acknowledged that she's resigning. And so if the letter was accepted, then there's no reason that Anna would think that she couldn't vote. Because if she put it in the letter and no one brought it up to her, she's, she's under the assumption that she can vote because she's submitted her letter of resignation. You've acknowledged that she's resigning um, yes. and there's no. no but there's no reason to believe like she sent the letter in good faith assuming that what was in that was correct and if no one corrected her and and she still technically meets the i mean she resigned because she didn't feel comfortable being a trustee anymore which i understand but if she still meets the definition of a resident and she can still be a trustee but well, she doesn't that, meet the definition of being a resident, though, at this time. She does not meet the definition of being a resident. She does uh, meet the definition of being a resident. No, she doesn't. I, 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 called, and I called up to confirm this to find out uh, whether she qualifies to be, uh, you know, for instance, um, a registered voter in Woodstock. She's no longer qualified to be a registered voter in Woodstock. Um, and without being a registered voter, She's not qualified to be a village resident um, uh, uh, for the I'm purpose just, of I'm serving really for the purpose of serving on the village trustees. No, so I'm, but I'm just, I'm, I'm just confused because I don't understand. Like you're so super passionate about me not being able to vote tonight when it, it seems like I don't I I just don't understand why. Like why? Well, because you resigned a couple of weeks ago and it's simple. It's as simple as that. I I think this is going on and on a bit too much. As you said, if there's a you know, it's hard to let go. You, you know, I'm sorry, you've served wonderfully. Um, I was going to get around to talking about that, Anna, and you have served wonderfully, and you resigned, and you don't live in Woodstock anymore. You're no longer a, a registered voter in Woodstock, and it's just not, not correct for you to be a voting member any longer. It, that's I don't know all. if that's actually true, but okay. I'm concerned that it's an unresolved issue. Well, I'm concerned that we keep rehashing something that someone who has resigned a couple of weeks ago needs to be on tonight. And I, I, I just want to move move on, see, and then there's a lot more on our- Yeah, Jeffrey, I totally appreciate it, but it's, it's, are there three of us or are there four of us? And if the letter says there's four of us, and then are, the interpretation are, of the letter is that there are three of well, us, that's two different things. There's, well, there's, there's three of us, and when I spoke to you as an individual, and I spoke to Daphne as an individual, and decided and and talked about this a, a while back about how tonight was going to go with the three of us, there was never from either of you a mention of oh oh but wait a minute maybe Anna should be included. So well, I, I, you know, I wasn't I, I'm aware sorry. Of the letter. I, well, her, le I her, letter, her letter was a clear resignation. Yes, I don't think anyone's disputing that. I think what we're, I think the point of concern is that she wrote what her last date is. We know that it is, that it is, that apparently the VLCT tells us that they, people resigning are allowed to say what their last date is going to be. And that was in the letter that you and Bill accepted. Like you guys accepted it, which means so that you accepted for, the whole letter. Okay, for one thing, 
um, we we don't have the letter. I'm trying to find it, but um, we don't have exactly what Anna I'm wrote. Anna, you it. must. What? You don't I'm have it? I'm trying to find it. I don't. I, it's not in my email. Uh, yeah. Um, so, but when I spoke to Anna after that, mm -hmm. um, you know, there was no talk about her continuing to vote. There was talk about uh, appreciation for Anna staying on the parking committee and for her making a presentation tonight, and which I'd like to see go forward and, and happen. Um, and I think we need to let go of her continuing as a, a trustee at this point. Um, and it's as simple as that. There, there's there enough, there was enough, there was enough feedback from people who were concerned about Anna's residency that issues came to me, they came to uh, the town clerk's office as well. And uh, there was enough of that, that Anna was uh, understanding enough to say, you know, I need to leave, I need to resign. And, and, and technically she needed to. Um, right. So that's where we are. And so uh, we need to, <coughs> we just carry on at this point. Sorry, but and I can't okay. find I can't I can't find it. But at, at any way, it, it was it was a clear resignation. Um, that Bill can confirm that, and that Anna doesn't deny that. And yeah, nobody's deni thought, nobody's denying that, Jeff. It's just okay. unclear as to why I'm not able to vote tonight. But because, Bill, do you have a take on this? As somebody who also received the letter, did you take note of the date that she put down for her last meeting? Unfortunately, I don't have the. I'm not in Woodstock, obviously, I, so I don't have the. I don't have the letter in front of me either, so I don't. But you don't recall reading that in the letter that there was. No, I don't because I. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Yeah, again, I don't have the letter in front of me, so I can't. <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, so parking committee update. Um, yes. We were charged last time with doing some more research, which we were we are currently in the process of. So um, we presented our proposal. Um, so we're uh, we're kind of digging into uh, what needs to. So so this was what we were charged with. We were charged with looking into Park Mobile with Jeff, you, which Jeff you were very interested in, um, and speaking more to Hanover. I think Michelle has fully communicated with them and feels like, you know, we have an idea of what their recommendation is. They're kind of transitioning fully to kiosks, um, and they're liking that a lot. Uh, so that's good. Um, financial comparison uh daphne was going to look through some of to because she's taking over as head of the committee um she was going to look through the proposals to get herself acclimated and um do an update to the proposal i don't know if that's done i don't think it's been fully submitted but we're um we're in the process of updating that so it is more reflective of all of the financials um as far as costs of each project and um, uh, and and the options that are out there too, as far as leasing, financing, that kind of thing, um, and then I am charged with, in particular, the design review board um, meeting. I'm going to on the 16th. We're on the agenda, and we uh, we did have visuals taken, so that's sort of what we are waiting up on Jennifer um, is working with a company that we had proposed um, to move forward with and they brought up a sample kiosk um, and they we took several pictures of it around town I think um, he was even the representative was even able to answer a couple of questions for people who had been passing by which was nice um, and so now that we have those visuals, I can bring uh, it in front of design review board and get their way in on, um, on that. So that's where we're at. So we haven't, you know, we don't have anything fully, fully to submit as far as, um, I don't know, do we Daphne? 
you have new information you want to so I don't have any I don't have any new information and from what I saw yesterday and I I I definitely need an education on Google Documents so that um, <laughs> I'm not as proficient on them as I probably should be but um, Jennifer sent me um, the the piece of paper where the amounts were to be inserted and it looked like all the amounts were inserted Anna there okay Am I wrong or yeah so so we'll Not just plan her. on um we'll plan on presenting uh an, a newer proposal with more visuals and Perfect. also um or you, you guys well i don't um, well, 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 welcome to come along um, uh, so, for our, at the next meeting. Um, so my concern, uh, Anna, is uh, is timing and under under pressure to make any kind of move where things can still be done, uh, where we're not well into winter. Um, so I'm wondering if if you're not prepared with the final uh, presentation tonight. We could call a special meeting uh, to deal just with this problem uh, because I'd hate to delay it past where we need to if the decisions have to be made. Um, um, we need to hear dollar figures and, and the rest of everything you said. Um, sure. To, My concern with the, um, sure, I can understand that. I, w I was not given a hard timeline for this. I wasn't given like a deadline at all as far as when this needed to be accomplished. I, and and honestly, I have a little bit of a concern as to pushing it since there has been you know some kickback from um, from the public and letters and things in the standard and all that such about you know opinions about what happens, which rightly so. Um, but I want to do the due diligence that needs to be done so that everybody's happy. And having every, you know a special meeting, sometimes uh, there's less. Uh, turnout um so i just i just want to make sure it's done right and not rush it uh so but otherwise i mean i can understand wanting to get it done in a timely manner for sure robbie do you have any comment on, about timing yeah i do a little bit uh, so obviously these the current meters are are failing um we're not sending them out to repair because we're going to replace them. So the ones that are failing, we're not, we're just having, we're inserting some of the old, just the old coin operated meters, just so that there's something in there now. And we do get a little revenue out of it. Um, the other thing of course, is if a meter's down, we're not getting revenue from the meter. So there is a, there is a time concern, um, but obviously I agree. We, we want to get it right because it is a very important, to the village um, there are you know what I guess the committee really is, is really looking for in my mind is just a, a gives a direction do we want to go with the kiosk do we want to go with the single space meters um, so we're looking for a little bit of clear direction but once we present our final I think that will give the the information that that will be able to allow the trustees to give that direction um, and then the other thing too to think about is I know uh, one of the concerns from the last meeting was uh, they didn't you didn't necessarily want to deplete the parking fund in order to do either the kiosk or the single space meters. They both, you know, admittedly have a, a fairly high price tag. There are options in terms of what you know uh, municipal lease, for instance, where. Um, over the course of four years, you're basically you're financing or leasing the product, and then at the end of the lease term, you buy it. You buy the products um, for a dollar. So you could you could in, in essence do either kiosks or single space meters with the higher price tags, and not necessarily have to deplete the fund because the revenues generated would, of course, uh, we would be able to perhaps put some revenues back into the parking fund as it paid forward on the lease. Just an idea I want to throw out to the trustees so that you have a little bit more information about 
how you know we might be able to move forward with these projects. That's what I have. That, Daphne? Um, two things. Um, one, I thought our next step was to go in front of the design review board um, and see what their thoughts were on everything. And secondly, receive the letter from... Um, yeah, you're, Nicole, you're right. I wasn't, um, trying to, I wasn't trying to... Pardon me? I'm, I didn't, sorry. I'm sorry, Daphne. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Well, the, the second thing is um, that I've lost my train of thought. Um, design review. And then the second thing is that the letter that we received from Nicole, I didn't receive anything behind it from any of the merchants. Um, the letter from Nick Farrow. Did any of you? The, uh, uh, I did. Uh, this letter came to me uh, late yesterday afternoon. So I just passed along uh, his cover letter to you and Seton. And uh, I've got in front of, I've got on my table here, 20 signed letters by different merchants that he gathered um, all in a position of, uh, well, I can read the cover letter so the public knows what we're talking about. Um, here are September, it's, it's, it says it's dated September 7th, 2020. Here are 20 signed letters from Woodstock businesses rejecting kiosks in the village of Woodstock for aesthetic reasons and agreeing with Mr. Rockefeller's vision of a 19th century historic village, which in their opinion is the main reason visitors continue to return again and again. There are actually more than 20. I've just gotten around to picking up, I just haven't gotten around to picking up the rest. Nick Farrow. Then note, he adds on the bottom of that, it is my personal opinion there should be no meters either, either, but instead signs that say two or three hour parking, they are enforceable and could be in the range of $20 per ticket. This would certainly prevent employers from parking all day and making it pleasing for visitors who don't have to fumble for change or credit cards the moment they get here. So a similar Vermont tourist town instituted three hour parking, no meters, no kiosks, not never ending expense to maintain meters. Also no upfront $125,000 cost just for starters. Think about it, Nick Farrell. That's the letter we received and I've got the 20 signed letters that he refers to. It's just, I didn't want to uh, make copies of all of those and pass them around. But we have we have them, and I'll turn them I'll turn them into the office. So I, it's obviously there's unfinished business uh, here um, in in terms of direction. I'm just concerned of timing uh, for the reasons the chief had said, and the leasing option that the chief said is also very interesting in terms of uh, concerns about uh, depleting depleting the uh, parking fund in its entirety. Um, so, but we need to know those things. So obviously we need answers to, in terms well, of how, what is it, what would that cost per year? And in the meantime, we need, would, would we be developing um, a, a parking area perhaps um, that we could even consider doing away with parking meters or, or kiosks, whatever it might be chosen um, uh, somewhere down the line? Well, it was clear from, from when we were in a meeting that, um, even just doing the two hour parking, the revenue was not going to be met as it was today, even with meters. Um, so we need to think of something. And we also knew about the leasing option, um, both of which are, are you know, viable ideas. So can we, can we get those figures? Uh, uh, something the committee can, can, can yes. find out? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because it seems like we can't make an informed decision tonight. Um, so, um, so do we want to uh, hold off until we hear back from the committee? If if you want, if the committee wants to meet before the second Tuesday in October, I would be very open to uh, having a special meeting just to just to go over this parking and making a decision, perhaps. Um, and if not, then we will have it on the agenda for the second Tuesday in October. Does that, does that sound right to everyone? Mm -hmm. It does. Yeah. Uh, my question, when was the design review committee meeting? The 16th. The 16th. 
Okay. So that's that's obviously important too. That that get, get feedback from, well, from that. Well, I I didn't think I thought we the plan was to go to the design review before a vote. Isn't that right, Anna? Yeah, that's what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to go and get their way in on it and see, and see what they say. I think, I, I mean, I think from a zoning perspective, they have to kind of, uh, they have to approve it in order for it to be okay to move forward for, with an RN. I'm not, again, I'm not quite sure about that, but right. rules are muddy today. <laughs> okay. So, um, thank you. Thank you, Anna and the committee, Daphne and, uh, and chief Flish. And thank you for gathering the further information we need to make a decision. Next up on the, the river embankment mitigation project. Um, the, this is a project that uh, the trustees have received information about. And we, I suppose we need somebody to speak to it, who is here, Martin Kopenhauer. Yes, would you please uh, tell us um, uh, a little bit about this project? We, you gave us a lot of information. Thank you. And, uh, but uh, give us a short version of what it is we're, we're looking at. Yeah, I, I will be able to do that, I think, in uh, about 10 minutes and with the help of uh, 10 slides. Uh, Nikki, you're able to cue that up for us? The yes. The slides. Thank you. So I'm, I'm Martin Kopenhaver. Thank you so much for making time on your agenda. I'm uh, thankful for that and particularly thankful now that I see how much is on your agenda. So uh, um, we will uh, make uh, good use of your time, I think. So um, I can't see it on the screen. Is it? So I am one of those who um, own a home here in Woodstock for over 20 years, but now I'm a full-time resident as of uh, June 2019, very happy to say. Uh, this is the back of our house, the 19, the green. It's taken by our neighbor, uh, Charlie D'Ambrosio, who's on this call from 17, the green, and that was April 15th, uh, 2019, which is one of the events that destabilized uh, our, the back of our, our houses. Uh, also, Ed Gillis is on this call, and I'll introduce you later to two uh, engineering advisors and specialists that have worked with us. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? So why we're here, and I should say who the we is, it's five homeowning families uh, along uh, the green, and we're requesting the town's support to help us obtain funding from regional, state, or federal sources to prevent the river embankment area between the town green and the river from sliding into the river. And that, uh, I, I think you'll see later, that's not over dramatizing the situation. But let me uh, make explicit some things that are implicit in this statement, just to be clear from the start, we're not looking for financial assistance from the town. Um, we're looking for a partnership with the town in order to seek funding from uh, other uh, sources. And we're not looking for any kind of definitive decision tonight. We're looking uh, to uh, uh, ask you to uh, partner with us uh, to enter into a process. So next slide, please. Um, these are our homes. You may not have met us, but you certainly are familiar with these, these homes. They're the five homes uh, west of the Middle Bridge uh, on, on the green, um, and Ed and Andrea Gillis in that home, uh, number 13, and Elise and Amy Caffrey, number 15, Charlie D'Ambrosio, Marisa Serafini, 17, my wife Karen and I in uh, number 19, and Alicia Monell and Henry Healy uh, in number 21. Uh, certainly I iconic uh, uh, homes, and, and four of them, as you can see, over 200 years old. So may I have uh, the next slide, please? Just a brief chronology of, of, uh, of events. Uh, the, the relationship of 
these homes and the river is a dynamic one, and that goes back uh, some time. You can tell by the way that uh, that the the level of our uh, flooring and that sort of thing is it's it's been going on for a very long time, but it has been very much accelerated after Irene and after the April 15th, 2019 storm, and that whole month of April was really devastating with dramatic uh, changes to uh, the embankments between our homes and the river. So some examples here are foundation walls falling, uh, literally moving away from the house in our case, uh, river walls uh, tilting, patios and driveways um, settling. I think settling is a very <laughs> overly gentle way of, of putting it. So, it's really uh, uh, failing. And landscape uh, tearing from soil tension cracks. You'll see that in an appendix, appendix four, which has photographs from all of our properties. And we've been uh, concerned enough about this, we've engaged experts to help us assess it. Um, uh, Sanborn Head and particularly Sean Kelly, who's on this call, uh, they specialize in geotechnical, that is soil and subsurface evaluation, design, and construction, or as Sean likes to put it, I have a PhD in dirt, uh, and uh, very helpful in his analysis for us, and that's included also in appendices, as well as Pathways Consulting, which is a civil engineering firm, and I don't see if Jeff uh, Goodrich is on the call yet, but he certainly will be. Um, next slide, please. The conclusions of these folks that we have consulted uh, are, are these that, uh, and, and I should say that, that, that the data collection included are having soil uh, borings uh, going down as far as 80 feet and, uh, uh, and uh, groundwater well installation as well as extensive surveys of our properties to evaluate what's going on. And the conclusion is that there, the embankment behind our homes is sliding toward the river, or to use a technical term that I've learned, uh, unfortunately learned, is a soil mass slope failure, which basically means that the slope just isn't holding. And uh, again, much exacerbated by post uh, Irene and in uh, the spring of 2019, those conditions have accelerated and now are urgent. Um, so the mitigation requires repair and stabilization of the retaining walls along the river. It's not enough just to shore up our homes, in other words, that we've reached the point where the, the embankment, the slope needs to be shored up in order to secure uh, our homes and to um, make sure they don't, again, slide into the river. The current cost estimates of mitigation, because they involve extensive work on the wall, um, the retaining wall by the river, is in the high six figures. We do not have a detailed estimate at this point, but that's uh, from our experts, that's the, the best estimate at this point. So we're talking uh, a considerable expense. So maybe you would have other reasons to add here, but we think that this village should be very interested in this because uh, that section of town along the green, the middle bridge is critical to the ongoing viability of the these historic homes along the green and in turn to the town's history, its streetscape, its tourism. Many times tourism has been raised in the meeting tonight and it's a, a commercial success. Um, we would like to partner with the town in a way that indemnifies the town for many costs that, that uh, we would consider bearing uh, the costs that normally are, uh, would be borne by a town. Uh, if we were able to obtain that kind of funding. We would work with the town, and this is indeed what we're looking to ask you to do tonight, is to, uh, after this meeting, if you authorize us to be in conversation with uh, the town manager and others in the town to put together an acceptable memorandum of understanding um, that uh, would, would outline the partnership and the terms of our partnership with the town. Uh, in line with other kinds of arrangements that we've become familiar with, such as where sewer lines are, uh, are in construction and private development. So uh, just in, in brief, the summary is th this is a, uh, an urgent problem. It's important uh, to us 
certainly because our homes are literally at stake, but also to the town. Uh, engineering experts say that it's urgent, but fixable. And current cost estimates for mitigation in the high six figures uh, funding help is available, but only with the town support. The, and uh, we have um, gotten some leads on particular entities and agencies on the regional and state uh, basis who uh, would uh, um, consider funding such, uh, such uh, mitigation and we would indemnify the town of any related costs. So what we're asking very specifically is your support to authorize the town to work with us on taking this another step further so that we could agree on a mutually acceptable form of indemnification so that we can partner with the town to seek funding to mitigate the river embankment failure. Um, Jeff, you mentioned that there was a lot of material. We, we, uh, we put that in the appendices so you could look at it at your leisure. I'm not going to go over that except just to say that there is a report from Pathways Consulting, which is really an executive summary of the process and their findings. Uh, the Sanborn Head uh, preliminary engineer's opinion as well. Um, and then uh, quite a bit of uh, data in the form of of charts, graphs, and other findings that's in the Sanborn Head engineering analysis. Some of that uh, would be, uh, need to be uh, explained by the experts and I'm not I'd, uh, beyond my ken to do that. Um, and also some of the pictures of the slope failure in the settlement, which uh, bring home, uh, I think, the extent of what's going on and the urgency. Um, so, with that having been said, I'd love to entertain uh, questions and particularly may ask others to um, respond to some of the questions, but open it up. Thank you, Nikki. Welcome. Jeff, I can't hear you. Jeff, you're on mute. Sorry about that. Not at yeah. all. Martin, thank you. I don't want to miss it. Yeah, no. Well, you know, you did, you did provide a lot of information and, and we thank you for that because it, it, it really helps us to see the, the severity of the problem faced by uh, those homes. And you're right, it doesn't just affect you as homeowners, it, it affects uh, the village of Woodstock as well, in, in my opinion. Um, I think what you're asking for is reasonable to pursue, um, and I would I I uh, I would definitely be inclined if the, uh, my fellow trustees agree that uh, you should be a, in contact with Bill Kerbin to work out a memorandum of understanding and to see if we can't mitigate this problem and and perhaps solve it good time because hopefully we've still got 97 more years before Irene comes around or <laughs> close to that. But uh, uh, Bill, do you, do you have anything uh, that you would say um, in terms of uh, your ability to work with these folks um, and, and with uh, 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 a legal representative for the village? One of the things I'd point out here is uh, when the North Street reconstruction of the wall uh, occurred, we were fortunate, which was just a couple of years ago, we were fortunate in that uh, the, we have two forms of government here and you kept referring to the town. The village is its own municipality. And uh, uh, the town does apply for numerous grants and the village fewer of them. And this might be a good time for the village to flex its grant writing abilities um, to see if uh, we could, could help um, in that direction um, uh, on its own. Uh, that, that worked for North Street and it might work here too. But uh, right now, the, the, the only stage we would be um, uh, uh, agreeing to is for you to work with our, our, our municipal manager uh, and to come up with a memorandum of understanding that would uh, uh, help us move forward on, on this. Yeah. Bill, could you comment? Oh. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I look forward to you know just working with Mr. Copenhaver on this, and uh, I'll certainly try to look for some 
maybe some comparable um, MOUs like he mentioned about like the sewer agreements. I'm sure we have some some documents like that that would uh, mimic that and we won't have to reinvent the wheel. So this could be a pretty quick process. And I certainly look forward to working with you all said looking at the grants and pro providing you of uh, some much needed assistance there. I'm sure I'd be, I'd probably be relying more on pathways to do more of the writing because I'm sure a lot of that's going to be technical engineering writing, which kind of gets up above my pay grade or outside my uh, expertise, but I'd be certainly happy to help in any way I can. Thank you, Bill. I appreciate that very much. Sure. So, no, Seton and uh, Seton and Daphne, before I open it to uh, uh, other other folks, uh, I'd like comments from Seton and Daphne on it. Yeah, I just had a question about if you all had started the process of investigating um, possible grants that you might um, want us to help you apply to. Uh, not specific grants yet, but we've had uh, uh, identified. Uh, agencies that would offer such grants under s the right circumstances. And again, th there's a reference here, I think, to, uh, to a pre-event and post-event. We uh, um, may be able to get a grant for mitigation before there's some other Irene or some other uh, uh, disastrous event. But, but we also recognize that if that's not possible, we want to get everything, all of our ducks in line, ready to go if there were another event. And uh, Jeff, wouldn't it be wonderful if there's another 97 years? <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think That's it's me. very important that you get it addressed. I'm mm -hmm. sorry? Daphne said she thought it was very important that, we, that you get this addressed. Thank you yeah. very much, yes. Um, other folks, Jennifer, Raymond, you had your hand up? I, I do, you know, across the river, um, that, that road on River Street has been falling in as well. And I know we keep putting blacktop over top of it, but it keeps sinking in and it's a knife edge. So it might be a good idea to see what grants are out there for the town as well. And working with this project to figure out if that road can be, be repaired as well and that hillside. Um, I know traffic gets diverted you know, onto River Street and heavy trucks, you know, are allowed on River Street um, when the, when town is closed. So um, clearly I live on River Street and right down the river from you. And, you know, we see some erosion as well, but I, for the town's sake, I think getting involved in this and also understanding the other side of the river right across from there and how that's being impacted would be helpful. That's all. <laughs> Thank you. But I think, I think right now we want to uh, yeah, separate this. Um, but Jeff, Jill. Well, I think your idea about North Street, uh, following whatever we did for North Street is a really good one because that was a huge cost and a huge um, contribution that the state made to the cost of that to do it, to do the work thoroughly in a way that we can never afford as a town. So um, looking that up is going to be worthwhile. Did you have, uh, did you project, did you write that grant, Jill? Who, who wrote the grant? I, I didn't, that was in Phil's time, so I sus suspect he did, and I'm sure we have records okay. of it. Yeah. Yes, Phil wrote that grant. But my point is to work with you if, you know, if I happen to get on the board. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Okay, any other uh, comments on this topic? Otherwise, I, 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 I hear that you have, we have support for your request, Martin, and uh, that uh, please get in touch with Bill, uh, not this week, but next week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I really appreciate your uh, concern and your attention to this issue and uh, the way you've gone about your deliberations here. Very welcome. Okay, thank you. All right, moving along, uh, we have the draft of the East End uh, Park Policy. And this is uh, something that's been worked on for quite a while. Um, Sustainable Woodstock has done a, a really 
fantastic job developing the East End Park over a number of years now and, and uh, with the cooperation of the village. And uh, at this point, it's, relatively, it's a relatively uh, underused gem compared to what we predict will happen in the few years to come. Uh, and with the addition of the uh, River Trail Loop um, as well, it's going to become a popular spot and people are going to want to use it for different, different purposes. And, it, it, and we, we feel as the sustainable Woodstock that it is important to uh, have uh, regulations and rules uh, in place in advance of that expected use so that people can plan on, uh, on, 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 on how they can do business there, how they could have a wedding there, how they could do uh, different functions or concerts and what the village, which has agreed to do some of the maintenance of that property would uh, be compensated uh, in terms of fees for <coughs> certain events. So we're working, uh, working with uh, the Sustainable Woodstock, and especially with Mary McVeigh. There's Mary, I see her, uh, who's put in a tremendous amount of work doing research on uh, what's been done in other parks. Uh, this park is, uh, uh, as I said, it's a real gem. If you haven't been down there, it's, it's worth going and enjoying right now. Um, and it will continue to be that way if we take good care of it. And that's part of why we, we need some of these regulations. So uh, Mary, could you uh, add something to what I've had to say here at all? Or do you have something to add? Oh, you're on mute. You're, you're on mute, Mary. Thank you. Go ahead. No. Nope. Oh, no, nope, we still can't hear you. Even though your mute sign is gone. Well, so I don't think we're going to be able to hear you, Mary. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, when, when that happened to somebody with me today, they had to log out and log in again. Okay, you could try that, Mary. Turn your computer off and start all over again. So um, we have, uh, it's, it's nine pages long. So it's not something uh, I can read to the public. Um, it's, it's quite a long document with uh, fees and, and regulations for various reasons. Um, and um, how would the trustees like to deal with this? One, uh, before deciding to adopt it, would we like to somehow um, find a way for the, any public that's interested to be able to take a look at it and give us feedback? Um, or, uh, or uh, which is one, one proposal way we could look at it. Um, Daphne worked on this as well for, for the trustees, so she's very familiar with it. Um, or we could also see it as a living document and perhaps uh, we could approve the work that's been done and uh, which is always subject to change uh, by the trustees in the future. Um, so. My concern um, is uh, primarily with the people who live and have businesses in that area, um, that they have some sort of an input um, on it. Because as I was looking through it, it's very thorough. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> it's, it's very thorough. It's got a lot of rules in them. Um, but the, the things that I didn't see, and maybe I missed it, I apologize if I did, um, was what sort of the, um, you know, can we have five weddings a week? And if you have five weddings a week, like what does that do to, um, you know, like the folks at Abracadabra are right there. They live and work right there. Um, obvious, um, you know, Splendid Chaos is right there. Um, we're about to have a bakery right there. And obviously there are people that live across the street and, um, and other things sort of around. So um, my bigger concern um, is, or one of my primary concerns rather, is that those folks um, have been heard since, uh, since they'll be the ones that are dealing with the traffic and the noise and all those things. And how can we make sure that 
um, no matter what we decide at the get-go, that we can be responsive um, to anything that comes up that we haven't thought about, um, so that um, so that this is an asset that everybody can enjoy, and it's not a oh, this has become a problem thing because it is such a wonderful right. space. Right. Jeffrey, can you hear me at this point? Jeffrey, oh, yes, Mary. We can. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, hold on, hold on, Butch, and then Mary. Yes, Butch. Uh, I I agree. Uh, you know, Abracadabra is a tenant of mine, and there is also a living space above. We're very close to that property. Uh, I own that property, and I would like a chance to be able to review this document before it's adopted. I'm probably the closest landowner or the closest living landowner to that property. Yes, you are, Butch. They've done a beautiful job and we love it, but um, we, we should at least have a chance to review the document. That's, yeah, that's why I threw that out there. Um, uh, Mary, go ahead. I have two things um, to add. Uh, I think Seton and Butch, you make an excellent point that the uh, uh, neighbors are very important. In fact, there is some language somewhere in the document about respecting neighbors and their privacy and, and their circumstances. Um, and one of the ways that that is dealt with is by using the same noise level uh, maximum that is in place elsewhere in the village that came out of the whole uh, Woodstock Inn usage for uh, events such as weddings. Uh, there is currently no specified maximum number of events that is left solely to the trustees to, in your determination, what would be a good number if you even want to set a number or whether you want to deal with it case by case basis. Um, and again, I think, you know, experience yields better information and, and better guidance toward what kind of policies you need. And perhaps that was, uh, Daphne would probably know better than anybody, that might have been some of the history of how um, event limits were set for the Woodstock Inn. Uh, so that might be something that you do want to consider now or adopt later down the road. But I will uh, concur with Jeffrey that this is a venue that will be, in my humble opinion, in high demand because it's a unique venue in Woodstock and it provides amenities that don't exist elsewhere. Uh, we've already received requests that we've had to put on hold to uh, do things like uh, concerts or hosting a session as a part of bookstock or yoga classes, et cetera. So it is going to be a well-used and well-loved community space. And for that reason, um, Seat and I wholeheartedly agree the, the uh, <laughs> The uh, policies are very detailed, and that wasn't in an attempt to make it um, onerous or, or anything of the sort, but just to anticipate potential questions that would arise. And the thinking jointly was, well, better to have a policy in place that could begin to address this, even if it uh, is changed down the road, than to have to scramble um, at the moment and, and create something or re, be reactive rather than proactive. Mary, you've done an amazing job in getting it all together. And um, I, I think, Seton, your insight in um, paying attention to the neighbors and, mm -hmm. and Butch too it is a great point. And I think that yeah. we can add that in there very easily. So here's a suggestion. How about if we get uh, make this document available to the public, both in the town hall and to the, uh, the immediate neighbors, um, if we could physically make that available to them where they are, um, and then uh, give this uh, a month and uh, October's meeting, uh, take it up to see if we want to change anything in it or approve it as it is or with 
or with changes. And, and it is a living document. So um, we, we may, through experience, once we start experiencing events there, want to make changes at that point too. But we should have something in place. And it is a very thorough document uh, as, as it is. So what do you think of that idea? Um, I think that it's a good idea to put it out to the public. Um, my one question is um, who will, because at this point it hasn't officially been turned over to the village, who will manage that process of, I mean, obviously we can help with the, like putting it up on the website and promoting, promoting feedback. But does that feedback come to the village or does that feedback come back to East End? Um, just so I know where it's gonna go I, so we know how to process at it. This, at, at this point, it should come back to the village because okay. at this point, yeah. we're the ones who are voting on making them right. regulations, enforceable regulations. So, right. um, so it should come back to the village at this point. Um, and uh, um, so we would ask uh, Nikki to put it on the listserv um, uh, as as to a link to it, and it should be available from that link uh, on the on the website. Um, we can get a copy to Butch. I don't know who else. Uh, fortunately, it's not a lot of residential right immediately around the park. Um, uh, I don't know across who. The street, like the laundromat is across the street, and you've got a couple of businesses across this right across the street who might have to deal with like noise or ingress and egress. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, Bill, do you think we could get copies to the immediate businesses uh, surrounding the park? Um, yeah, sure. Sure, yeah. we'll reach out to them. And I, I'd appreciate if we could get uh, comments from uh, Ray, who has some experience on this. If you would take a look at it too, Ray, um, that, that would be great. Um, so, uh, all right, if we're in agreement, let's proceed in that manner and then uh, take another look at this in October. Um, and, and see if we want to make changes um, uh, or approve it as it is, or okay, some so combination. Okay, tabled until October. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mary, so You're much. Welcome. And it was uh, it was it was it was so nice uh, yesterday to be down there um, and seeing so many people had enjoyed the the park as well as the the trail. But uh, you know, it was the official opening of the river trail, which was loop trail which is wonderful but it was also in a sense for many of the people who attended uh their first chance to really go wow at that park it's, it's, it's so beautiful uh, it's thank lovely. you lovely thank thanks you. for your support absolutely all right moving on um the next Actually, item jeff yes. i'd like to move that we reconsider our action concerning anna's letter just because we have the letter now um before we make any more votes um, so that we make a final decision for that today. Um, what because is we have the letter, um, we have the letter and then your response to the letter, which indicates that you knew that she would be serving today. Um, and so with those two new pieces of information, I would move that we continue to let her vote today as, a, as her final meeting, since that's what was in the letter and that's what you responded affirmatively to. And I'm happy to share that with you. I, I don't remember exactly what, what was written. I, I certainly do remember wanting Anna to participate in the meeting. I didn't, don't recall uh, asking her to participate as a voting member. But um, I'm happy to, I have, a, I have a copy of it. I'm happy to screen share it if you'd like. Well, even if you do mm -hmm. have a copy, I'm not sure any, that it's legal anymore. Um, and, but... Um, I'm happy to entertain it. Um, I'm serious. And Anna, I'm not sure it's legal. As you know, um, there have been a lot of people who called, and that's been a big issue about you not being a resident legally any longer. Um, I don't think it's proper um, that you continue in a voting manner tonight. But um, that's where so, I stand. So just to clarify. Okay, just so we all know, mm -hmm. I I I am resigning because I I don't I don't feel comfortable, um, and and you know it, it's not right if I'm not living there full time, you know, and people are complaining, but I I did not resign earlier um, because I was directed by you, Jeff, as the chair, to continue on. So that's one point. Uh, second point, 
is that um you mean before to continue on before your resignation letter? To, to continue on to to fulfill my term basically is what we you and i had decided or earlier um, earlier than earlier on when i told you what the my housing situation would be um and and so people started to uh express concern and so immediately i'm i'm not wanting to serve if there is any level of concern just so everybody's clear in the village that that's sort of what what has happened so i submitted my letter of resignation and i said in the letter um my last board meeting will be the regularly scheduled september meeting unless urgency is other is needed otherwise and Jeff, your response was, thank you, Anna. Glad you'll serve at the September meeting. And then you said, Daphne is willing to serve on the parking committee, blah, blah, blah. So that's, what's, that's what it is. That's, those are the mm -hmm. facts. Well, thank you. You guys for, can make a decision. Thank, thank you for refreshing my memory. Uh, that, that's what I said. Uh, as, as you know, what happened following that, um, is that there were a number of people in the village who uh, objected um, to you serving on the board. And it made me nervous and thinking that, and I take some responsibility for this because earlier on, uh, Anna did discuss this with me. And I said, oh, well, you know, you do have the house here, you're registered here. Um, maybe you are a dual citizen. Let's, let's, why don't you see if you can serve this out? But then, but then when people became concerned with that, I, I think that it was a, a bad mistake on our, both our part to pursue it at that time. Um, and, then, uh, and then when you did send the resignation letter in, um, I did want you to continue to this meeting um, because of all the work you've done and because you've been a good trustee. But enough public flack came back about you not being a resident of Woodstock and not being appropriate for you to be a village trustee, that I just strongly feel that there is that concern that you just said, if there's enough concern uh, that you shouldn't continue, that at this point, you should, I think, accept your resignation um, as, as, you, as you made it. And the concern is there. And if you that if that concern is of import to you, then I think we should let it lay the way it is. I'm and I'm sorry for for thinking that it was okay to go forward. It wasn't. It wasn't okay, and that was uh, that was wrong of me to think it was okay. Um, it simply broke the rules, and uh, it, and I don't want to do that anymore. Sorry to sorry to say it, but that's that's the way it is. I, it was a mistake. I don't want to argue about it. I'm I'm just um, I I just don't know what the what it is with voting tonight and what really makes sense or what's right or what's wrong. But it's just tonight, and I I don't really want to argue about it anymore. So. Okay. Well, if you don't want to argue about it, I think we should do the right thing and, and continue with your position as having resigned. But I think I think everybody should be able to weigh in on that and have it not just be your uh, decision, Jeff. Also. Well, um, okay, but you know what? I'm happy to let people weigh in, and I can see where the weighing in is going. But it's I think illegal at this point, and I just don't advise us to continue a mistake. I really don't. I, I just, it's, it's not wise. And then on another level, it's sort of at this point, uh, going forward with you not being on the board, really having uh, an influence on anything at this point isn't even necessarily appropriate other than as a citizen uh, comment um, or serving on a committee and, and commenting through your committee. So uh, I, I would question other folks to consider what they're thinking um, in wanting it to be, you know, okay when it actually isn't okay. It, and we're not doing this correctly. And we, we need to do it correctly. 
So I'd like to I'd like to move move on, and uh, having admitted that you know we did we did some things wrong, there's no question about it. So I don't want to continue that. I'm sorry. Daphne, did you have any concerns? Oh, you're on mute. After hearing that explanation, no, I, I don't. I think we, I agree with Jeff, we need to move on at this point. Okay, well, for the record, as you all know, uh, Jeffrey definitely knows I'm a policy and procedure person. So um, I'm disappointed that the policies that we set out and that were set out by the state um, were not that, that because those things apparently were uh, inconvenient that, um, that she's not allowed to vote tonight because there was a letter which was required by law, there was a date which was required by law, and um, and she she followed the rules in the resignation and that resignation we now know and the date was acknowledged by the chair and the chair has decided that he's changed his mind since then, which I think is unfortunate because once something is put down in writing and once a letter is received, it should be honored. So. Um, I'm disappointed, um, but I won't, if, if my other two colleagues don't want to continue discussing this, then um, then I'll abide by their wishes and stop discussing it. Thank you. I'm sorry for the whole uh, reason this came about. Uh, Anna would have resigned um, quite, a, quite a while ago. Um, and so I, I'm sorry that uh, we bent things to keep her in uh, as long as we did. Um, and I take some responsibility there. It was an error. All right, so let's move along at this point. And we have a manager's report. Bill. Yes, um, just a couple of items. I wanted to uh, catch you up on the uh, police negotiations. Negotiations are nearing completion. Uh, so we're hoping to have a finished document here soon. And of course, that'll come before any contract uh, that is um, ready for ratification would come before the board for approval. Um, uh, there's some drag paving that's being completed throughout the village on several different roads. Um, I've also been working with Dave Green on a local government reimbursement grant that will include a reimbursement for costs, for COVID costs of around $42,000 for cleaning of Town Hall, the Welcome Center, a hazard pay and PPE. And then kind of a segue onto the financial report. As you can see, I've tried to do this a little different this time as to uh, give you a, a um, comparison of this year's fiscal budget to last year's fiscal year budget. Um, so hopefully this will add to some more openness and transparency and be a little more in depth and maybe a little more easier to read. And I'm gonna work on some other reports for you all as well as as well as the town and make sure we have some consistency and synergy there. So I don't know if you have any questions on that as well. Yeah, I, I definitely have some questions about the more extensive report. I, I think it's a great useful tool. I, I think we need some education on it. Um, and I found, I think a number of errors in it that uh, I think we need to go over with, uh, with Zoe. Um, oh, okay. So, um, yeah, I think going forward, it gives us a lot more uh, perspective than the, okay. short, than the short version. On the short version, I do have a question on um, one sure. that you might be able to answer. Um, uh, under police communications, um, we're looking at the percentage of actual budget, uh, you know, two months into uh, fiscal year 2021. Um, and we've used 86.65% of that budget up. And I'm not sure what that was all done on. And yeah, I noticed, I, I noticed that too, Jeff. I'll have to, uh, let, me, let me ask Zoe about that, because I noticed that too. And I don't know if it's something that we do up front each year. Um, yeah, let me, let me get back to you on that. It just stood, it just stood out. Um, you know, yeah, we're, 16, sure. we're basically 16.7% through the year and uh, the fiscal year. And uh, when the jump, when the numbers jump that high, I, I'm not sure uh, if everything was meant to be spent already, what we expect to come down the road. 
So thank you. I think you got an answer to that. Um, and then I, I really do think we need to go over the longer version of this to be sure we don't have errors in there because I, I see a few, uh, not what okay. we're talking about. Um, okay. Do you want to maybe set up a meeting offline and we can meet with her sometime yeah. next sometime, week? Sometime when you're back, yes. Sure, absolutely. That'd, that'd be great. And any other of the trustees who want to be in on that, please. Because uh, you, if you look at it, you may end up with questions such as, as well as me. All right, uh, that's it. Thank you for that report. Uh, any questions? Any questions for Bill? Okay, hearing none, uh, and if that's a financial report. Um, now, uh, uh, in accordance with uh, Vermont DSA one thirteen, we are. Uh, eligible to go into executive session to discuss uh, uh, appointees. And so I would entertain a motion to go into executive session at this time. For the discussion, we would come out of executive session if we made any sort of uh, decision. I make a motion to go into executive session. Thank you. And second. Second. Seconded. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 So we will return to the public meeting um, as soon as that ends. And uh, uh, if uh, you, Nikki, if you could send us into that separate room, we'd appreciate it.
keep sending them a message that they will be in the apartment <laughs> unless they already told you, but you're not talking.
Okay. Uh, thanks for hanging in there. Those of you who are still uh, watching. Um, so we had a, a, an interesting conversation. We, as I said before, we have four very qualified people. And so it was not an easy decision, but uh, I would entertain uh, a motion to approve two of the four um, from my fellow trustees. Daphne or Seton, would you make a motion? Go ahead, Seton. Oh, well, I move to um, elect Brenda and Bill. I second. Um, okay. Um, any further discussion uh, amongst us? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries, as it must be all three of us in agreement. Um, and uh, thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank, thank, thank you, Jer Jennifer. Thank you, Jeremy, uh, very much. Please stay involved and interested. And remember that um, if your heart really leads you in that direction in March, there, uh, these positions will have to be elected by the public. So thanks, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, you. guys. Okay, now to, to the two folks who uh, were just uh, elected, you will need at some point in the next day or so to go to the town hall and be sworn in. Um, and uh, Charlie, uh, the town clerk can do that. The village clerk can do it, but Charlie's a little more convenient and Charlie can do that. So if you would go down and officially be sworn in, at, once you have done that, then you are eligible to uh, vote, as uh, be a voting member of the trustees and welcome. Um, Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, there's one small, uh, um, uh, uh, thing to go on at, at this point, um, and I think there's enough of us to go to, to do this, is that I, I would like to make a motion, since we're absent of one, uh, for uh, uh, a, a vice chair to be in place on the trustees. And um, I would move that Seton McElroy be uh, uh, a vice chair, if that's agreeable to Seton and to Daphne. I agree. And would you second that, Daphne? Yes. Okay. All, all those in favor say aye. 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 So we have a vice chair. Um, and uh, now I do want to say um, at this point. Does that mean that I have to like pick up your dry cleaning and stuff, Jeffrey? Not at all. <laughs> it, means, it means the, it means the one, one, you run the meeting if I'm not here. And that happens. In the past few number of years, uh, it's happened once a year, pretty regularly, once a year. I can handle that. You definitely can handle it. Um, so uh, I'm sorry that Anna's left, uh, but um, I do want to say publicly that she has been a, a, a contributing member of the Board of Trustees um, and that uh, we very much appreciate the work that she has done. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry for the little misunderstanding tonight, but um, uh, we wish her all the best uh, in, in, in Reading. And she, of course, she's still going to be participating in Woodstock through uh, Mon Vert and whatever, other, whatever other ways she finds to participate. Community, uh, community trust as well. Um, and uh, so thank you, Anna. And now, to move along what's been a very long trustees meeting, we have the approval of minutes. Uh, the first one is from August 11th. And, uh, you know, I've, I've taken great joy in finding your errors, Nikki, which have been few and far between, but I'm so disappointed that I can't find any errors tonight. And yet <laughs> actually not, I'm not really, I'm kidding. Um, I, do anyone else have any comments on, on the minutes from August 11th? I found none, no errors. Yeah. Okay, and uh, let's do this as a, we'll, we'll take one vote. And how about the, uh, the second set of minutes, which was for that very brief meeting. Um, where'd it go? So brief, I can't find it. Uh, 
What was the date on that last one? It was August 21st, Jeff. August 21st. Thank you, Bill. August 21st. There it is. <clears throat> Um, I found no errors in that one either. Um, any other things to be noted for August 21st? If not, I'd entertain a motion for uh, the approval of both sets of minutes. Second. Well, okay, I make the motion you second. Oh, I'll move. That's all, right. That's all right, doesn't matter. <laughs> we just, I'll, I'll make the Let's motion. Up, Daphne, pull out your handbook. Right. So pull out your I know, I have it. Yes. <laughs> thank you, uh, Seaton. And, uh, and so the thank so the motions are uh, it's a, 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 the uh, minutes are approved. Thank you, um, Seaton. I do want to say also that the handbook uh, people can see this massive folder, mm. uh, which has so much in it, is a thank you to Seaton who will help guide yes. the, the new the new trustees. Brenda, go there. Yes. Make some space for your bookshelves. Yes, because yes. You'll, you'll need to look through this, and uh, there'll be a uh, there'll be. I told Seton there'll be a test in uh, a week. Meeting. You'll have one week, Bill, and and okay. to, to memorize the entire <laughs> uh, town ordinances. <laughs> no, just kidding. But this is a really helpful resource. So thanks, thank you, Seton, for pulling that together. Appreciate it. That's really good. Um, any other any other business to come before us tonight? That, uh, any on anyone's mind? I said one comment, uh, Jeff. If I could, all yeah. those people are learning um, interested in learning about pickleball. There will be an auction item on Pentangle's uh, fundraiser this fall, so you can bid for free pickleball lessons, probably given by me. So I uh, hope you'll sign up for that when it comes around. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Thank I just you. had one last thing. Um, the warrants for September. I think Daphne did July. I did August. Jeffrey, can you do September? Uh, oh. Yes, uh, I can do September, and then we'll break in. Some, we'll break in Bill and Brenda going forward from there. Uh, and then a reminder that even though there's the one person every week, um, I know we were behind. Like, because normally one person signs it, and then everybody else signs it. Um, and so she was behind on a couple of months just because I think not everybody realized that they had to go in and like everybody has to physically sign off on it as well. Oh, I was unaware that she was missing uh, signatures. Um, no, I think you had, I think you went in, um, but yeah, because all of our signatures have to be on everything. But normally, I guess, uh, Nikki, right? You usually bring to the meeting, right? Yeah, normally they would be at the physical meeting. It's just because they're not, we're not getting all of you to sign at once. So then they're getting kind of backed up. But so yeah, when people can come in, it's good to come in. And that way I can get you guys to sign the minutes as well. Oh, that's a good idea. That'd be great. Yeah, and if Brenda and Bill have any questions, the, the other three of us are, are available to please call us. What do you mean, warrants? Who's getting arrested? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Is there so, any good uh, contact information for you, Jeff? Like your email and your phone number? I don't have any of that stuff handy. Maybe you'll get that to us in short. Sure. Time. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Send, uh, uh, well, I don't have yours. So I can't well, send it to you. But, but uh, you know what? I'll tell you what, Bill. There's this store I hang out in. Yeah, uh, I know where to find you. <laughs> six, six and a half days a week. Yeah, I, uh, I know so, where this. <laughs> why don't you stop in and we'll exchange information. For many years, it's been my daughter's favorite store. I'm not oh. kidding. Really, oh. it's very true. Glad, it's all the glad time to hear it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Jeffrey, by, that way, by the way, that putty that you just sold to my daughter <laughs> ended up in her hair very quickly. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry about Peanut that. Peanut butter takes care of that. Does it? Even with that putty stuff? Oh, okay. <clears throat> I wish I'd known it's that before. Cool. Try WD-40. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> no. All right, I need to take a motion to adjourn unless there's anything else. i make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all. And, uh, Good night, everyone. Thank you so Good much. Night. Good Thanks night. very much, gang.